Today on Stock Charts in Focus, we're taking your analysis to the next level, showing you how to build what I call multi-dimensional relative strength right into your charts. Now we're gonna do this in Sharp Charts, we're gonna do this in ACP, but what it's gonna allow you to do is find the strongest stocks in the strongest industry groups in the strongest sectors of the market. This is relative strength at every single level from the top down. We're gonna show you exactly how to bring this into your charts on today's show. Lots to show you, of course, so let's get right to it. You know what it is, it's all new, it's all here, it's Stock Charts in Focus. All right, my friends, welcome to the show, Stock Charts in Focus. Of course, our product focus show here on the channel where we dig into the site, dive into the tools, show you around the features, and ultimately help you get more value out of stock charts. That is our mission here on this show every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time up on the live channel, but of course also up on our YouTube channel after that and the on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. So lots of different ways to watch. I am your host for the show. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com. If you are new, so good to have you. If you've been uh, joining us on this show for a long time, welcome back. In either case, we are gonna have some good fun on today's show. I am really excited about the episode that we have lined up for you today, because this one, not only is it gonna dig into uh, my personal toolkit, my personal charts a little bit, as we like to do on this show, but this is really actually inspired by something that happened yesterday, something that we, uh, we recorded yesterday that just came out today. So yesterday, I had the great opportunity to sit down for another episode of The Pitch on Stock Charts TV, which is one of my favorite shows that we do on the channel. What we do with that show, we bring on three different experts and we ask each of them to bring with them five timely trade ideas for the current climate, five charts that have caught their eye, five setups that they really like. So yesterday on the uh, on the show, we had Mark Newton of Fundstrat, we had Tony Zhang of Options Play, and we had John Kosar of Asbury Research. The three of them sat down, brought some great ideas to the table, and we had an awesome, awesome conversation digging into the market, digging into these charts and these setups that they brought with them. Now specifically, we had a lot of discussion about relative strength as part of that whole conversation why they picked certain things, why they were going long on some names, why they were going short on others. A lot of it revolved around relative strength, which is something that we talk about a lot in technical analysis overall. We talk about that a lot on Stock Trust TV with the different experts that we have on different shows and everything. This is something that I use. It is integral to my process analyzing relative strength, probably the most important technical indicator that I have other than price. So this is uh, kind of near and dear to my heart, and it was a great conversation yesterday about relative strength, really bringing that into the conversation. But specifically, there was one piece of it that really inspired today's show. Now, some of the charts that Tony brought with him had a classic relative strength panel on them, which was the, uh, the security, the stock of the fund versus the total market. But we also saw that Tony had a very unique panel on his charts as well, which was kind of a next level of relative strength. In this case, he was looking at specific stocks versus their industry group. So kind of another take on relative strength, not just how is this stock doing relative to the market, but how is this stock doing relative to its own industry group, its own peers? Now, that was a great inspiration for uh, for me to, uh, to launch us into today's show because that kind of multi-tier, multi-dimensional relative strength is something that I've been doing for a very, very long time. It is one of my favorite things to show people on stock charts. It is very easy to set up. There are a couple little tricks to it, but once you get this set up on your charts, it is an incredible, incredible boost to your analysis. Really kind of digging into relative strength, thinking about performance, not just at that sort of standard level of how is this doing relative to the market, but really kind of digging into uh, different corners as well with the sectors and the industries uh, in addition to that individual stock. So we're gonna jump over to the site. I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on kind of what we're doing, but we're gonna build these charts up from scratch on today's show. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do this. And like I said in the intro, we are gonna do this in Sharp Charts, and we're gonna jump over to ACP and also do it over there in our new advanced charting platform. So lots to show you on today's show. Let's jump over to the site, give you a little background on why we're doing this and how you can bring it into your charts. 
All right, everyone, so before we jump over to the charts and really start putting the pieces together here, again, I wanted to give you that little bit of background on kind of what we are doing. Now we're starting on our charts and tools page. You can get here by going up to the top left corner of any page around stock charts, giving that charts and tools link a click. When you scroll down here though, in our summary pages group, you'll notice that there's one for sector summary. You got a link to it right here on the right side of the screen, but also as you scroll down, you've got a bigger link to it down here. Now I'm gonna pause here for a moment because this card says something very important. Drill down from the S&P sector ETFs to the respective industry groups and stocks, the stocks within each of those industry groups. That is what our sector summary tool allows you to do. Now we're gonna take a quick look at this, something that we've demonstrated on the site before, but I firmly believe, I've said this in the past, this is one of the best stock discovery tools on stock charts. You've got your scans and all of those other research metrics, uh, research methods and everything like that, alerts, all the different tools, but the sector summary tool is an incredible resource. So I wanna give you a quick demo of how this works because this really is the inspiration for the, uh, the multi-dimensional relative strength charts that we're gonna build on today's show. So I'm gonna give this a click. We'll head over to our sector summary page. Now, as that little description suggests, this page allows you to drill down from the top of the market, from the, uh, the very top of that sector level, all the way down to the individual stocks within. What we're trying to do if we're going long, is find the strongest sector. And within that sector, we wanna find the strongest industry group. And within that industry group, we wanna find the strongest stocks. When we line up all of those levels of strength, we've got a really strong sector, we've got a really strong industry group, and we've got a leading stock within that industry group. That is strength at every level of the market. I like to call them levels. So that's where that kind of multi-dimensional concept comes in. This isn't just relative strength of this stock versus the market. This is relative strength at every level. Ultimately, stocks are in groups. We know that. We put stocks into industry groups. We put stocks into sectors. We classify stocks with other market caps and all these different ways that we like to group things together. So these groupings that exist out in the market are incredibly important, and they have an influence on those individual names. Uh, you know, we'd like to say that a, a rising tide lifts all boats, but it goes the other way as well. It's really tough for a stock in a specific industry group or a specific sector to kind of float out there on its own if you start to see the sector and the industry group that it's in really start to weaken. So when you line up this performance at kind of every level, if you're in the strongest sector, the strongest industry group, and the strongest stock within, it can be incredibly powerful. We're gonna demonstrate that on today's show. But really, again, what we're doing is kind of building a chart that's based around this sector summary tool. So the way that this works is you can set up your period. Uh, you start at the, uh, at the sector level. Again, we've got the 11 S&P sectors listed here. I personally like to change this to be maybe three months so we can look at uh, sector performance across the last three months. We know that we've seen energy absolutely flying. The next up though, the, uh, the next best performing sector over the last three months has actually been staples. So energy might be a little bit hot at this point, up 20% in the last three months. So I'm gonna click into the staple sector. Now when I do this, again in that little description, we had drill down in the, uh, in the description there. Uh, so when I click into the consumer staple sector, when I click the name of it, you'll see that I'm now in that sector. Up at the top of the page, we have consumer staples listed. We're still looking at the last three months, but we've now got all of the different industry groups within this sector listed on the page. We can do the same thing. We can look at uh, over the last three months, what are the strongest uh, strongest industry groups within this sector? Well, same kind of concept, tobacco might be a little bit stretched up about 17% almost over the last three months. So maybe food products is gonna have uh, a few better setups for us. So I'm gonna click into food products. Now we've done the same thing again. We've drilled down into this industry group. So we started with a really strong sector. We've jumped down from that strong sector into a strong industry group. And now we're looking at all of the individual stocks within the food products industry group. So I'm gonna sort this. I'm gonna click scooter and then I'm gonna click universe. That's gonna just kind of group these things together. That's how I like to use this page personally. But now we can scroll down a little bit here, the, uh, the unlisted ones, but we can scroll down to our large caps. Maybe you wanna target a large caps. And what you can see is the, uh, the top ranked scooter scores, top ranked stops, stocks in this very, very strong uh, industry group. 
So we can start to breeze through here. This is a great way to research some of these names. We can, for instance, hover over the symbol and actually get a little mini chart of that. Hershey looks like a really good one. So that's actually the stock that we're gonna work with today. Now, when we click Hershey, we can now actually jump over to a chart of this stock. So we're gonna pause here for just a quick second because what we're gonna do with this multi-dimensional relative strength charting is build a chart style that's really based around this concept that we've just done with the sector summary page. We're gonna build a chart that allows us to see this multi-dimensional relative strength all in one view. It's not just gonna be the stock versus the market, it's actually gonna be the sector versus the market, the industry group versus the sector, and that stock versus its industry group. So let's jump on over to the Sharp Charts Workbench. We're gonna start there, and then after we do this in Sharp Charts, we'll pop over to, uh, to ACP and do the same thing over there, demonstrate how to set these charts up in ACP. So here we are on the Sharp Charts Workbench. We're looking at a chart of Hershey, which was the, uh, the stock that we identified from that sector summary page. So this is gonna be a good example to work with today. Now up the top of the screen, you can see that we already have one of these relative strength panels. Now this is my default chart style. This is the one that I like to start with. And the most important thing to me is, is this stock outperforming the market? So that's what this panel up at the top is looking at right now. As you can see, if you read the, uh, the label, we've got Hershey Foods divided by VTI. This is the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. So we set this up, this is looking at the performance of Hershey versus the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, VTI. So this is the uh, the first stop on our uh, sort of our relative strength tour here, looking at this stock versus the total market. Before we dive in though and add these panels to our charts, I wanna give you a quick preview of kind of where we're going. Now I've talked about this on the show in the past, I personally like to use what I call chart levels to kind of build my way up instead of having every indicator that I could ever want on my charts. Uh, I actually have chart styles that sort of bring in additional indicators as I go. Once you've created those, it's really easy to assign them to what we call style buttons over here on the left side of the screen. So as I'm scrolling down there, you might be able to see equity daily. and We've got level four at the bottom. We start with level zero, then we go to level one, level two, and level three, and level four. Now, if I click through these, you'll see that level zero is just the candlesticks. Level one brings in one additional piece of information, which is that relative strength panel up at the top. Level two is the chart that we were just looking at. So that brings in uh, a few more things, volume and the RSI down at the bottom. Level three brings in another couple of indicators here as well. We've got accumulation distribution and the, uh, the scooter. And level four for me brings in those additional relative strength panels. So this is what we're gonna build our way up to today. In this case, we're looking at these relative strength panels that track Hershey versus the total market, then Hershey's sector versus the total market, then Hershey's industry group versus its sector. And we can even add a fourth one to this that would be Hershey versus its industry group. So this is a quick preview of kind of where we're going, building these multi-dimensional relative strength panels into our charts right up at the top. We are gonna get back to level one, because this is actually a really good starting place. Uh, we start with just that single relative strength panel up at the top. So to do this, to start building these in, we're actually gonna scroll down the screen and I'm gonna show you the settings that we've used to create that relative strength panel. So very, very easy to set these up. They're just a couple little tricks that you're gonna to wanna to know about, know about to, uh, to make this happen. First up, we are using the price performance indicator in this case. Now you've got two options. You can use the price indicator, which is just gonna give you uh, a basic ratio, or you can use the price performance indicator, which is actually gonna put things in percentage terms. So if I scroll up here, you'll see that this is actually a relative strength line in percentage uh, format. So this is showing me that over the last one and a half years, Hershey has outperformed the total market by 10.45%. I personally like to think in terms of percentages, but if you just want the ratio up there, you can also use price. We'll demonstrate that a little bit later in the show. But I've selected the price performance indicator here to start. Now in the parameters box, what I'm using is a ratio symbol. So to create these relative strength lines, relative charts, we use ratio symbols on stock charts. The way you do that is one symbol, colon, another symbol. So we've done that here in the parameters box. There's a little trick to this though. Instead of typing in whatever the symbol on the screen is, in this case, 
case HSY, I've done a little trick and I've typed in dollar sign symbol. You can see that right there on the screen. I've typed in dollar sign symbol colon VTI. So what is what that is going to do is actually tell the Sharp Charts Workbench, hey, whatever the main symbol is on this chart, in this case, again, HSY, pull that into this ratio symbol. So if we went up here, for instance, and we change this to Microsoft, I've changed the main symbol on this chart, and you'll see that this relative strength line has actually followed along with me because down here, we're using that dollar sign symbol uh, little trick. Now that's gonna come into play when we bring in the, uh, the sectors and the industries as well. But that is the, uh, the first trick up here. The most important relative strength panel that I've got is that stock versus the, uh, the total market. So we use that little ratio symbol with the dollar sign symbol trick. Now the second symbol in your ratio can be anything that you want. A lot of people use uh, dollar sign SPX, that's the S&P 500 index. A lot of people use SPY, that's the actual tradable ETF for the S&P 500. Personally, I like to use VTI. VTI tracks the total US stock market, touched on that a little bit earlier. Uh, but to me, that's really what I wanna know is, is this outperforming the market as a whole, not just the S&P 500? So in my case, I'm actually using VTI. Uh, which again is the uh, the Vanguard total index. So we set that up, that's what our parameters box looks like. Now I've positioned this above the main price panel. I've given it a solid thick line so that it really stands out. I've made that just a black line. And I've done one other thing. I want this panel to be a little bit bigger on my screen. Uh, you could use the, uh, the auto feature. You could even make it the exact same size as the price panel if you want. But in my case, I like that to be a half height. So what that means is that this panel up here, this relative strength panel, is gonna be half the height of that main price panel. So to me, that's just kind of a nice uh, visual boost to this relative strength line. Now I've added one other thing to this in the advanced options section. I've actually added a simple moving average to my relative strength line. To do that, all I do is uh, select simple moving average from this menu. I add in a 50 colon red in the parameters box for that. And what that does is add this little red 50 day moving average to this relative strength line. So I like this. It gives me kind of a, a slightly uh, longer term view of kind of where the relative strength has been heading. In this case, we can see that uh, the 50 day was really pretty flat for quite a while on Hershey versus the total market, but has really been picking up. So it's not just the, uh, the relative strength line itself. It's also that 50 day moving average picking up. So it gives me just one layer down into uh, to that relative strength panel. So that is our main one. Now we're just gonna duplicate this a couple of times. We're gonna bring in a couple little tricks to add in the sector and the industry group. So again, think back to our sector summary page. We started with that sector and we were looking for the strongest sector in the market. We wanted to be in something that was really leading higher. We saw energy was really strong. We saw staples was really strong. Those are the sectors of the market that we wanna be in. We wanna own things that are outperforming the market. So our next level down into this multi-dimensional relative strength view is going to be the sector. How is this sector doing relative to the market? So I'm gonna jump down here to the price performance indicator. I'm gonna add another one of these to my chart. Now, when you first add that here, it's gonna have dollar sign SPX. We're gonna delete that and we are gonna do dollar sign sector. So there's one other little trick that you're gonna to need to know about. Again, we talked through the dollar sign symbol trick. We've also got that same trick for dollar sign sector and dollar sign industry. That's what we're gonna to use to build up these relative strength views. So in this case, I wanna add a panel that is the sector versus the market. How's this sector doing relative to VTI? So I'm gonna use dollar sign sector colon VTI. Now I'm gonna position that above as well. It's gonna be below that top one. This is the, uh, the order, but it is gonna be above the main price panel. I'm gonna give that the same solid thick line. I'm gonna make this one, let's say purple. Uh, and then we're gonna do our half height view there. And we'll type in our simple moving average and make that 50 colon red. So here we go, we're gonna hit update. And now what we are looking at is the sector 
versus the total market. So we can see that in this case, Hershey, again, just like we saw on that sector summary page, that sector summary tool, Hershey has been outperforming the market, but we've also seen a lot of strength out of this sector as well. So that strength we're seeing in Hershey is really backed by strength at the sector level in addition to just the individual name. That is incredibly strong. I love to see that strength. That's kind of our, uh, our next tier down. Now we're gonna do this again. We're gonna type in price performance indicator here and we are gonna do one more trick. Instead of dollar sign sector or dollar sign symbol, the next layer down that we wanna see is, again, thinking back to that sector summary page we were on, we wanna find a strong industry group. So we're gonna type in dollar sign industry, and we're gonna compare that to the sector because we wanna find an industry group that's really leading this strong sector. We've seen that sector strength up there with the purple line. So we're actually gonna type in dollar sign industry colon, dollar sign sector. What that's going to do is give us a look into how this industry group, the industry group for this stock is performing relative to its sector. Now we're going to do our same settings here, solid thick. We'll make this one, let's say orange, set that to be half height. We'll add our simple 50 day moving average. Oop, caps lock on there, hit update. And there we go. Now we've got our third relative strength panel. So again, let's pause and kind of think about that sector summary page. Think about the uh, the chart that we now have up in front of us. We've got Hershey versus the total market. We can see outperformance there. This is a stock that is leading the total market. We can see the sector leading the total market. This purple line is moving higher. That means this is a strong sector that is outpacing the rest of the market. <clears throat> We've got our new line as well, which is that food products industry group that we clicked into on the sector summary page. And we've also got that versus the consumer staples sector. So this is the industry group of Hershey versus the sector of Hershey. We can see that this industry group is really starting to take off relative to the sector. So this industry group is starting to outpace the rest of its sector. When we've got the sector starting to lead the market and we've got an industry group that is starting to lead that sector, we know this is an incredibly strong group to be in. And we can add one more down below even. We can get as creative as we want really adding uh, any of these ratios. If you wanted to look, for instance, at the industry group versus the total market, you could do dollar sign industry colon VTI. I do like to add in occasionally one other view, which is the, uh, the stock, the dollar sign symbol, versus, as you can see there, it's industry. So we might wanna look again at that, uh, that next level down in that sector summary page. We're looking for strong stocks in that industry group. So we're gonna type in dollar sign symbol versus dollar sign industry. We'll set this up so we've got that above. Again, we've got our solid thick line. Let's make this one green. We'll do 0.5 on our height. And once again, <clears throat> we will add in our 50 day moving average in red. So here at the top of the screen, we now have four levels of relative strength on a single chart. We've got the stock versus the total market. We've got the sector versus the total market. This is a strong sector leading the market higher. We've got a strong industry group that is leading this sector. We can see that orange line starting to pick up that 50 day rolling up to the upside. And we've also got this green line that we've just added, which is, as you can see, Hershey versus the food products industry group. We can see that for quite some time now, Hershey has really been leading this food products industry group. So this is relative strength now at all four levels. And when we scroll down, we can see this reflected in the chart. Hershey has been an incredibly strong name. We've seen a beautiful, beautiful trend out of this, uh, really uh, since uh, you know breaking out kind of at the uh, beginning of 2021. This has been a strong trend to the upside and it's backed not just by its own move higher, the, uh, the stock's own move higher, it's backed by really strong relative strength at all four levels. This is a stock that's outperforming the market, outperforming its industry group, it's in an industry group that's outperforming its sector, it's in a sector that's outperforming the market that is strength at all four levels. So this is a great, great way to really kind of bring in the most powerful, most complete relative strength view that you can. When you find a stock that's got all four of these panels pointing to the upside as Hershey does right now, it is a very, very strong indicator uh, for that stock, a very, very strong sign for that stock. Now, the opposite goes. So if you saw these lines pointing down, that is bad. If you saw these, 
these lines are rolling over, that might be a sign that uh, the party is going to stop there for that stock that you're watching. So no matter what kind of system you are trading or investing over, these tools can help you. For instance, if you're looking for short candidates, you're going to want to do the exact opposite of this. You're going to want to look for relative weakness instead of relative strength. You're going to want to look for things that, uh, that looks more like back here, where we had a sector that was underperforming the market. We had weakness out of that industry group. We had a stock that was underperforming the market and, uh, and really kind of going flat versus its industry group. So you can actually use this really in kind of any system that you want. You can also use this to uh, to find, again, you know, when the party might be coming to an end. When you see the stock continuing to move higher, but those relative strength lines are all rolling over, you're starting to see a little bit of relative weakness come into that name, you know that this might be kind of the end of the, uh, the strong run to the upside. Or the opposite could be true when you see a stock that's going down, but suddenly these relative strength lines start to pick up. That could be a bottoming formation, uh, might be an interesting reversal play. So kind of no matter what system you are trading, these relative strength lines, this relative strength analysis at multiple levels, multi-dimensional relative strength analysis can be incredibly helpful for you. So we've done this here in Sharp Charts, uh, walked you through all the uh, four different levels of our relative strength charts here. Let's jump over to ACP. We're gonna recreate this from scratch a little bit quicker this time. We're not gonna have as many explanations, but we'll recreate this over in ACP, show you how this works in our advanced charting platform as well. So here we are in ACP, our new interactive advanced charting platform. This is the complement to Sharp Charts, our other tool that we've recently introduced, continuing to add very, very cool features, uh, a lot of kind of interactive dynamic features, very cool things you can you know, move throughout time and, uh, and lots of that stuff, create multi-chart layouts. If you're not familiar with ACP, there are some very, very cool things about this new platform that you can do. So definitely spend a little bit of time exploring it. But today, this is gonna be a, a quick a little demo of some of the features of ACP and a nice little comparison between Sharp Charts and ACP as well. So we're looking at a very basic chart of Hershey. I've actually stripped this out even further. In this case, we're looking at what I would call my level zero chart. This is just the candlesticks and a couple of moving averages. We're gonna build up that same relative strength chart though from scratch. Now, one of the nice things about ACP over here on the left is that you can actually favorite your different indicators. So you can see that I've actually favorited price performance. All you need to do to favorite something is give it a little star right here down on the list, and that'll automatically show up for you over at the uh, on the left side of the screen at the top. Now, I mentioned that I was gonna demonstrate the price indicator instead of price performance. So we're actually gonna do that right now. I'm gonna scroll down this list a little bit. I'm gonna find that price indicator. And to make it easier to find as we build this up, I'm actually gonna star that right now. So you can see I gave that a little star. Now we've got the price indicator right up at the top. Very, very easy to use some of these features. So I'm gonna hit price. Now that's gonna add this price panel at the bottom. To move that up to the top, all you gotta do is grab the label, move it right on up. There we go. We've now got the price indicator on our charts. Now, just like Sharp Charts, this is gonna start with the S&P 500, but we can do exactly the same little tricks uh, that we did in Sharp Charts. So we are gonna delete that. We're gonna type in dollar sign symbol versus VTI. Now we can set up a couple of different things here. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the styles alone for now, but I am gonna change some of these colors. So we'll set this up with some of the same colors that we were using before. I'm gonna make this top one just a black line. So here is our stock, in this case, Hershey versus the total market. Again, that's our top level relative strength panel. Now, one other thing I do wanna mention, if you wanted to add any overlays to this, as we were doing, adding some of the, uh, the simple moving averages, for instance, you've actually got that here in the settings menu. You can add any moving averages or any other indicators that you want to your, uh, your indicator panels here in ACP. Very easy to do that. You can even drag a moving average from your price panel up into the price indicator that you've added on the charts. Again, there are so many different features of ACP, so many dynamic things, some very, very cool stuff to play with there. But we've added our first level of relative strength there, the stock versus the total market. So we're gonna do that just a couple more times. We're gonna add in our sector versus VTI. We're gonna make that one a purple line here. We'll set the up and the down color both to purple. And again, we are gonna drag that one up to the top of the screen. Those little yellow indicators show you where you are dragging something. So here we now have the sector of Hershey versus the total market. 
We're gonna do that again for our next level down. Now in this case, I've set up one other thing on the chart that I'm gonna mention in just a minute. We're gonna drag our indicator up though. You might have noticed if you're an ACP user that that chart, that little price panel that I just added was kind of off the screen. And you might have noticed that I am actually scrolling up and down. Now I've set one thing up on this chart. You have the option in ACP to have your indicators all kind of squish onto the screen or scrunch onto the screen. We call that fit to window mode, but you can also turn that off. So in this case, I've actually turned off fit to window mode. So when you have multiple indicators on the screen, <clears throat> it makes it a little bit easier to see because you can let those kind of scroll uh, off, gives your, uh, your chart a little bit more room to work. We'll set this up entirely and then I'll quickly show you how that works. But anyways, back to our relative strength setup here. We're looking at our next level down, which is dollar sign industry versus dollar sign sector. We made that one, I believe it was an orange line there. So we're gonna set that up as an orange line. There is our next level down. Now we've got the industry versus the sector. Finally, we're gonna set up that same one that we had before. We'll actually scroll down, drag this up to the top, click into that. Here we go, I know we're kind of flying here in the uh, last couple of minutes, but dollar sign symbol versus dollar sign industry was our last level down. We'll set that one up as a green panel. And now here we go. We've actually got all of those relative strength panels on our chart. So Hershey versus the industry group, we've got the industry group versus the sector, we've got that sector versus the total market, and we've got Hershey itself, the individual stock versus the total market. So four levels of relative strength set up there in ACP in uh, just a couple of clicks really makes it uh, pretty easy to set these up. And again, if you wanted to keep uh, going in here, adding moving averages, that kind of thing, uh, you can do that within the settings panel for each of these indicators. Now I mentioned the subtle differences between price and price performance. You can see that here in ACP, instead of these being in percentage scale, these are just uh, the kind of straight mathematical ratios. So personally, I like to use the, uh, the percentage format, just makes it a little easier to think about. You know, typically we think in terms of percentage returns, that kind of thing. So I like to think about relative strength in percentage terms, but if the ratios make sense to you, then that is totally fine as well. You can use the price indicator to get those ratios on your charts instead. Now, finally, I mentioned fit to window mode. Now that we've got our chart set up, you can see this is a very tall chart. We've got four indicator panels plus the price panel itself. I've got fit to window mode turned off, which means this is actually gonna scroll off the screen, makes it a little easier to see. But if you wanted this to be fit entirely to the screen, all you've gotta do is turn fit to window mode on. That's gonna kinda of crunch everything in there. And now you can see everything in one view. So you got a couple of different options there in ACP. And this does actually change uh, the way that your cursor sort of interacts with the chart. So with fit to window mode turned on, when I scroll up and down, I'm actually zooming in and out and I can scroll back and forth in time. When I turn fit to window mode off, scrolling up and down, it just moves the chart up and down and I can still scroll uh, back and forth in time, but you can't really do the, uh, the zoom in, zoom out kind of features. So uh, some, uh, some different settings, different things that you can play around with there. I find that I turn that on and off depending on how many indicators I have on the chart. So for, uh, for my charts that have maybe three indicator panels on them, I like to leave fit to window mode on, but when I've got a big, big chart, uh, for instance, I've got my level four chart right here that we can quickly pull up. When I've got a big, tall chart like this, it's really nice to have the chart kind of scroll off the screen in ACP. So lots of different preferences that you can set up depending on the way that you want ACP to work for you. So my friends, that is our show for today. I am uh, hoping that you enjoyed our episode here, digging into what I like to call, again, multi-dimensional relative strength. This is something that I have used for a very, very long time. I know a lot of our contributors do as well. For instance, my father, Gaddis Rose, uh, a longtime contributor to Stock Charts, he's been a big proponent of this for a long time as well. If you're on the Sharp Charts workbench, by the way, at the bottom, there's actually a sample chart style. If you open up that, uh, that chart styles menu, there's actually a sample chart style called Gaddis Rose. If you click that one, these relative strength panels will pop up for you. A little bit of a cheat. I wanted to set this whole thing up uh, with you, show you how to configure this stuff yourself. But if you wanna just kinda in one click, pull these relative strength panels up on your screen, you can do that there in the uh, Sharp Charts workbench. Look for that sample style called Gaddis Rose. 
if you are in the um, the ACP sample styles area, you can look for mine called Grayson Rose, and it'll pull those relative strength panels up as well. So a couple of easy ways to get to that stuff. But hopefully you've had some fun seeing the workbench, seeing ACP in a couple of different ways, setting things up with some of these tricks. Remember, dollar sign symbol, dollar sign sector, and dollar sign industry group. Uh, dollar sign industry are the uh, tricks that are going to give you these uh, little uh, hooks into the sector and the industry group uh, and that symbol itself. So some nice little features there in both platforms, Sharp Charts and ACP. It's been fun, though, sitting down with you today, talking about relative strength, showing you a, a little look into my toolkit, my process. Hopefully you've had some fun. And hopefully you've also seen the sector summary page in action, which is a great, great resource. Again, one that I use a ton, a very, very powerful way to find strong stocks, strong funds. Uh, you can even stop at that industry group level. That's a, a way to find industry groups that are really working and then go off and find some ETFs that you can trade for, uh, for that. But lots of cool things that you can do with that sector summary page as well. So in addition to exploring some of these features on Sharp Charts and an ACP, definitely spend a little time with that sector summary page too. Now, it has been a ton of fun to be with you on today's show. Remember, if you had a good time with me today, we do this every Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern time up on the live channel, but also up on our YouTube channel after that and the on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. Lots of different ways to watch, but we're always just kind of sitting down, looking at uh, different corners of the website and ultimately trying to help you get more value out of stock charts. There's so much there, so many tools and features and tips and tricks and everything that we can share. So we try to do that every Friday uh, and it's just a great way to, uh, to make sure that you're seeing everything that's out there as a stock charts user. So hopefully you've seen a little bit of that today, digging into some, uh, some interesting corners, some tips, tricks, that kind of thing on stock charts. I will see you back here though next Friday for another episode of the show. In the meantime, definitely remember, go check out that episode of The Pitch that just came out as well. That came out actually today. So go take a look at that. It was a great episode, had a lot of fun there with Tony, Mark, and John. Some great ideas from all of them, some great chart analysis, great discussion. So lots of, uh, of great content in that new episode of The Pitch. In addition to all of the content that we do here on Stock Charts TV, always something going on. I'll see you, though, for another episode of Stock Trades and Focus next Friday. And until then, chart on, my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.